in order to capture everything that's in there, you have to stare at it for quite some time and try to figure it out. And as you look, sometimes you start to see elements that you didn't see at first glance. Look at that sky. That's exciting light. I started having a real passion for photography when I was a kid, maybe 10 or 11 years old. I wanted to be a photographer. At the same time, I came from a very poor background. My father worked in a factory in the garment district in, in New York, and I knew that I had to make a living. I decided I had to put photography in second place. I was always doing my photographic work. I just wasn't doing it on a full-time basis and wasn't exhibiting and so on. My uh, education in photography, most of it was self-directed. I'm an intense student especially when I decided to devote my life to, you know, my full-time life to photographic art. The Portrait Unbound started with a question. Can you express a person photographically without showing them? What I decided to do is go to an iconic figure in our society and say to them, if you could do your self-portrait, but you couldn't photograph yourself, any member of your family and friends, and no pets, what would be the list of things that metaphorically would represent you? And then I started thinking about the techniques that we have today all that I've learned about digital technology and how to use it, and started thinking, well, wouldn't it be very interesting to create a new language of portrait? I created what I have coined uh, as a phrase, a translucent composite. In a translucent composite, you can present more than one angle, more than one thing, more than one period of time. You are forced to deal with the third dimension. You can not only look at these portraits right to left and up and down, you're forced to concentrate in and out. One of the things that I say to myself in, in picking these uh, various people is 50 years from now, would I know who they are? And if I don't know who they are, will I know what they did? or understand that what they did was important. I think Hank Aaron passes that test. Pleasure to meet you. Right. How are you doing? Great. Before we do anything else, I want to just thank you so much for participating in this oh, thing. You. As I approach the various places and look at the various things and look at the various items and so on, I'm trying to take the shots that I feel will work into the composition that I'm trying to do. Is there anything that you want me particularly to shoot in Milwaukee that's representative of your time there. I was very taken by seeing a railroad car um, that he went around in as the Braves played in different cities. In those days, there were a lot of hotels that wouldn't take blacks. Um, and so he had to sleep in the railroad car. That railroad car is in the final image and it's an important part of that image. The actual baseball that was the 715th home run exists in, at Turner Field. It strikes them as an unusual project and one that engages them intellectually or emotionally and those that are willing to participate uh, do it for that reason and then they, they're engaged with it and then they're engaged with the, visual, the, the result. I don't know about what it's going to look like after it's after it's done, I'm I'm sure it's going to be something that I'm going to be very proud of. Just being involved with it's something that I think that I am very very proud of. I pick what is my background layer and I import that into this new composition that I'm creating, and then I start to import 
other shots. I move them around. I play with the opacity. I play with the size of them. When I get it off the machine and I look at it, now I'm responding to something different. Now, instead of looking at a backlit image on a large computer screen, I'm looking at an object. It blows out a little bit on, at this size. And normally I'm unhappy with it. And then so you go back and then we rework that. And that's why this is a long process. It's taken me to a lot of different places. A good example is Chuck Close. He told me that he loves gardens and that the gardens of Rita Sackville West in Kent, England were his favorite gardens and especially the white garden there. His favorite room of art in the world was Giotto's frescoes and Scrivani Chapel in Padua, Italy. I ended up on quite a journey <laughs> going around to Italy, to England and so on, taking shots of Chuck Close. This is a portrait of General Colin Powell. And his list um, included his charity, which is America's Promise. I, I just love the visual element of that, the little red wagon. It's very meaningful to, to everybody. As you come upon it, you wouldn't know exactly what arrest your eye. But if you, you have these anchors here, visually, there has to be places for the eye to rest. I want you to be able to rest your eye somewhere and then walk around, as it were, with your eyes to see the other things in it. Looking at it and getting a visual impression of it that's the first thing that counts, because if it doesn't, what difference does it make? Scale is very important to all my art. I try to make it scale appropriate. Ultimately, what counts is the performance, the, the print. One thing that was going on in my photography was I was moving from representational art to abstraction. Photography is a deductive medium. You start greater and you end up with what you finally zero in on. Painting is an inductive medium. You start with a blank canvas and you keep adding to it until you have a composition. What I do on the, in the computer is inductive. I start with many images and I bring them one at a time in and I work until I have a composition. My portrait series brings it together for me. I'm doing deductive, work in the camera and the viewfinder and inductive work in the computer building the composition. You have more control than ever and more ability to create than ever. There are multiple things that I want the audience to take away. That they understand that there's more than one way to look at a portrait. That a portrait can be more of a biography. First and most important, is that they've had a visual experience that's different than any visual experience they've had with photography. I love seeing the ocean. I love being, let me just grab that, grab this. That's the, that's the light I was waiting for.